In this lesson, we're going to build the lid to our dumpster. All right, so now that we have gotten up to this point, we're pretty close to being finished, and now we want to finish off the final uh, major piece of this object, and that's going to be the lids. Now, looking at this, uh, we have two different lids, and they are exactly the same. So we know at this point we only need to create one, and we could just clone the other. Now, while we're working, and you start working with separate pieces, you want to make sure that you're following the same box modeling guidelines. So what you want to do is you want to build out the primitive to get the major form, and then you want to gradually add segments to build up some of the other forms as you go. Now, at this point, you want to begin deciding on which forms are going to be the most important. So looking at this, uh, the major form of the the large thin rectangle needs to be created first and then secondly we need to create the segments for these ridges now looking at the end ridges they have a separate bevel on top of those so we need to make sure that we're watching out for that as well so already you should be taking a look at this image and going okay I know exactly where I need to create these segments to create these different shapes so to get started with this, let's go ahead and create our rectangle. So let's go to box, and I'm going to go to my top view to create this. And I want to create the outside edge of this uh, just on the inside of that center line there that we have. I'm going to left click and drag that out. And if I hit F3, I can see exactly what I'm creating. And I'm going to create that right up to this point here. Now notice that you don't want to get the lid on the inside of that metal object that's holding the bar. We want to be just on the inside of that. Okay? And then we also want to come down to the edge of the dumpster. Now, we don't want to go all the way out to the rim because we're building this straight out. And once it swivels down, it's going to have a little bit of an overhang. Okay? So we want to be careful with that. So let's make it to right about here. Okay? So we're going to release that. Make sure that you're getting your height. So left click whenever you're happy with the height. I'm going to go to about one and then left click. Now that we've done that, let's right click. Let's go to our perspective view by hitting P and then I'm going to hit F3 and just pull that straight up in the Z direction. Now looking at this, we have the lid and it's straight out uh, from here. Now we could go ahead and model this lid straight out. Okay. Uh, we could leave it just the way it is, but that's going to pose a little bit of an issue for us because now what we want to do is we want to be able to swivel this to where it rests right on the edge of the dumpster. So to get started with this, let's change the pivot point of this box. So we're going to go to Hierarchy, Effect Pivot Only, and then in our front view, hitting F on the keyboard, I'm going to bring this out to this point here. Now, really quickly, I want to make sure that my pivot point on this um, object is centered to my box, not along the bottom like so. So let's center to the object first, and then we'll bring that all the way over. Now let's hit F3 to make sure that we get it right on the end of that box. Okay. So I'm going to pull it over, and you can zoom in, and you can get it as close as you want and we don't have to be absolutely perfect but you can get fairly close okay so right there is good and once we have that let's turn off effect pivot only and then now let's rotate that down let's make sure our angle snap is turned on so we can get back to this 90 degrees and we'll pull that down now you'll notice that once it's swiveled all the way down let's hit F3 really quickly it doesn't quite meet the edge of the dumpster there. Now one other thing that I noticed really quickly was that the lid itself is not going to be in the center of this object. Okay, Let's go ahead and pull that back up to where it's straight across and let's drop this down below that bar because what's going to happen is there's going to be these pieces that wrap up around the bar off of this object. So let's go to our move tool or actually let's convert it to edible poly and let's go to vertex mode 
and select those polygons with our move tool activated and pull this back. So we're going to go to right about here. Okay. So this is going to give us plenty of room for that, that object, that element to be extruded up over the bar. So now let's go ahead and rotate that down just like so and let's make sure that we get that edge to where it's long enough so let's go to polygon mode and let's select this in polygon now instead of trying to select it in our perspective view what we could do is we could turn on this crossing and do a region select and any polygon that is perfectly encompassed by this region will only be selected if that's turned off and we try that it's going to select everything that that line touches so let's turn it back on and do a reselection now let's grab our move tool and what we want to do is we want to move it down to where it's a little bit longer but you'll notice that our move tool will only allow us to move out that way and that's not going to be good for us it's going to skew our box so let's change our reference coordinate system from view to local now we can grab our move tool and pull that polygon out in its own local direction so that's going to give us enough room there alright so now that we have that we've got our form I know that it's not sitting perfectly on the dumpster right now, but that's perfectly fine at the moment. Okay, we will take care of that issue. Now, what I want to do at this point is I want to start to create the segments that we need across the top to create that ridging. Now, before we do that, let's get rid of that polygon that's on the bottom of this box, as it will not be seen. Now, if you take a look at the lid of a dumpster, it's not perfectly flat on along the bottom it actually follows along with the contours that we'll be creating so that's why we're getting rid of that polygon so let's go ahead and create the segments that we need to create those ridges let's go to edge mode select one edge and go to ring and then I'm going to use connect let's use our settings and let's take one quick look at our reference image before we get started we have one two three and four rims now looking at this, the segment along the outside for this ridge is perfectly on the outside of the, of the lid. So I don't need to create a segment over here. We already have that. I need to create one for the inside of that, two for this. Uh, that'll be five total here for this one, and then six. So we need six new segments. Two for this one, two for this one, and then one here and one here. So let's go ahead and add in our segments. And I will add in six. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now the spacing on these is going to be a little odd. Okay, um, I could come in and I could begin to pinch these and I can spread those apart, but it's going to make these thinner on the end, but making these large at the same time so that's not exactly what we want to go for so what I need to do is go ahead and hit OK we have our segments and I'm going to go ahead and take these two edges so let's double click on that and then double click on this one and we're going to scale those apart okay and we're going to make these a little bit thinner now you'll notice that when I grab my scale tool it's trying to focus on one edge or the other and it won't scale from the center so if I want it to scale from the center, I need to convert my selection from this edge selection to a vertex selection. If I hold down control and go to vertex, notice that the scale tool moves to the middle of my selection, and now I can scale that uniformly. So let's take it to somewhere right around in here, and then we'll hit OK. Or uh, we'll go to these edges, and I'm going to scale those. Now, there's a little bit of an issue here. If I were to scale these edges, I could do so. And I could get fairly close, but it's not going to be perfect. So what I need to do is I need to rethink of how these edges are going to be created in the middle. Let me go to my edge mode, and let me double click on all of these edges, and I'm going to hit Control Backspace to remove those. Let's go ahead and select this edge right here and hit Ring and let's add in just two segments at this point so let's connect and let's just do two segments 
you'll see that it's perfectly centered and it gives us a good range but I want to split that apart just a little bit more so I'm going to go to pinch what I'm doing is I'm going to take these edges and I'm going to put them right on the middle of our concept here so these segments are going to be in the middle of these ridges now the reason that I'm doing this is because I'm going to use the chamfer tool to split those into two momentarily so let's go to something I think something like this will be pretty good and we'll go back down let's go to 20 and we'll hit OK and then we'll use chamfer to split those into two segments so now I have a better chance of making sure that these are perfectly straight okay and the perfect size for one another let me drop that size down a little bit and I think that's going to be good for us let's hit OK and let's make sure that these outside edges are the same width okay these we can eyeball a little bit better because they're going to be um, a little different so there's a good value and there we go so now we need to create the segments that go across the front so I'm going to go ahead and select all of these segments right here along the middle notice that we have the crossing on or turned off so let's turn it back on and let's create our segments let's use connect and I'm going to go ahead and spread these apart using pinch and I'm going to go up to something like 64 and looking, let's take a look at our concept really quickly uh, let's go up a little bit higher than that so I'm going to take this up to let's say 70 to where we get a pretty good spacing like so let's hit OK on that and then now what we can do with these polygons is we can go to polygon mode and select all four of those and then we can come in and we can bevel those now looking at that you'll see that the spacing is a little off here so what can we do about that well let's select this loop of polygons so I'm going to select this one hold shift and select the next one in line that selects that entire loop of polygons let's hold down control select this one and then hold shift to select that loop now let's go ahead and convert that selection to vertices so we can scale that so hold down control go to vertex mode and scale in the Y we want to try to get these polygons here in the middle perfectly spaced and that looks good now let's go to polygon mode and select just these four and we're going to bevel those edges so we're going to bevel that we're going to take our extrusion amount down to something around 1.5 or so And then we'll hit OK now that we have those edges uh, we can come in onto these outsides we can inset we're going to do just a little bit of an inset there and then we can bevel that up now let's take a look at our concept really quickly notice here that it's a little bit higher okay so we want to modify that polygon we want to make sure that that is set properly now it's not uh, giving us the correct size so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my scale tool from view to local and let's scale that along the X now those pull in and they're perfectly in line with our lid now that I have that I can use bevel again let's take our bevel amount down and also our extrusion amount and there we go now I'm not happy with the overall thickness of these elements so let's hit grow one time to grow our selection and then scale that in the Y let's scale it out enough but we want to make sure that we're not touching that outside edge and that looks good so now that we have the major elements of our lid in our next lesson what we're going to do is we're going to finish that off by creating the mounts that go around uh, the bar and it will finish that lid by creating the other one as well. So I'll see you in the next lesson.